disorder. For others, it is a necessity of a sleep disorder. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be talking all about shift work, the impacts on our normal sleep schedule, um, you know, ultimately what it is, right? So technically it's a circadian rhythm disorder, what that means, causes of shift work, um, disorder symptoms, how long does it last, and then getting into some treatment options, sleep tips, all that kind of stuff. So um, yes, I've, Lori is, is manning the, uh, the social media um, as usual. So um, I don't know if uh, we'll kind of hold off on questions maybe till the end because yep. potentially we'll be able to, okay, great, great. Did Hopefully. you want to share your video? Or are you good with your, just your picture? Oh, I thought it was, uh, it was going on. So okay, what? okay, let me, let me help you for a second because I'm going to have to um, make you host because yeah, let me sh I don't, I think it actually, can you try it? Then. Will it let you? Uh, no, nope, okay. it's the same thing. It's, it's I'll tell you, hold on. It, you might, you, uh, maybe when you, when I reclaimed it, sorry, everyone. Technical difficulties. There you go. Now you're the host. Okay. Can we see me now? Yes, I can see you now. Aha. Thank right. you. There you are. Sure, sure. So, um, can we see both screens now? As That's well? perfect. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, we're going to be diving into all these different areas. So, let's start off with circadian rhythm. Most people have kind of heard this term, may kind of know what it is. We'll, we'll talk about how this relates to shift work, but it's important to understand that, you know, circadian rhythms are natural, what, what is kind of known as this internal clock, right? I mean, we run on a 24-hour cycle to a certain degree. Technically, um, males and females run on uh, slightly different times on average. I think the last study I was reading somewhere around 24 hours and six minutes was um, males and then females are 23 hours and 58 minutes, something like that. So we're not 100% set, but either way, I mean, our sleep wake cycle is based on our circadian rhythm um, often. So there are different types of circadian rhythm disorders. Delayed sleep phase, these are my night owls. Um, I am also a night owl, so there's that. There's the advanced sleep phase, more so known as the early birds or people that um, as we age throughout the, the um, life cycle, life spectrum, whatever you'd call it, oftentimes we um, shift towards more of an advanced phase. So this is the people that are going to sleep at 6 or 7 p.m., waking up at 2 or 3 a.m. kind of thing, um, irregular sleep-wake. This is um, you know, one of those things where sometimes we're, um, we're, we're basically not on a set time every day. It switches, which is similar to the non-24-hour sleep-wake type. And then we get to shift work, which the most common factor in shift work clearly is the shift work, right? We're working different hours and our body is not used to it. So um, technically it is a disorder adjusting to a work schedule which impacts your ability to sleep at quote unquote normal times. So when we're awake, when our body thinks it should be sleeping and it's the other way around, we're trying to sleep uh, when the body thinks it should be awake. This is one of those things where we can get used to a different sleep schedule, but a lot of times people will have this irregularity that we're going to talk about more so, but that's what kind of perpetuates the difficulty. If we, if we have irregularity with our sleep schedule, so if we're not sleeping at the same times, either during the night or potentially during the day, then it's going to be difficult to feel refreshed. Even if we're technically getting enough sleep, it may be lower quality of sleep because of this irregularity. So um, to a certain degree, I think it's important to understand a couple different um, things that are going on when we have our normal sleep and wake cycle. So the top part of here is our homeostatic sleep drive. 
So this is the drive to fall asleep, basically. So um, to a certain degree, when we are awake, when we are exerting energy, we are putting out and we're uh, creating more of what's called adenosine in our body, in our brain. As we um, increase adenosine levels throughout the day, fatigue um, rises, um, tiredness increases, and once it hits kind of a certain threshold, you know, and you'll see kind of this in the middle of this graph, in the middle there, then usually we're tired enough to fall asleep. Um, on the other side, on the bottom hand side, the circadian rhythm, which we kind of just briefly touched on, that's the alerting signal to the body, right? So there's a little bit of a shift. It's not exactly polar opposites here, as you'll, you'll see, but you know, during the day, the circadian rhythm, when we have tons of light exposure, is naturally alerting us. It's stimulating the brain. We're awake. We're supposed to be awake during the day, and then it dissipates during the night somewhat as we're trying to sleep. So clearly this is not the normal pattern um, or this is not what we would want a normal sleep-wake cycle to look like if we're on a completely different schedule. So for those of you that are um, on, the, on the webinar here or on, on Facebook um, or even potentially if this is taped and later on because you're sleeping right now kind of thing, if you look at your schedule right now where you are working, you know, this schedule works for people that have the quote unquote normal time when they're going to sleep, 9, 10, 11 kind of thing. If your normal time of going to sleep is more so in the middle of the night because you have a you know, 2 to 11 shift or 2 to 8 shift or whatever it is, or um, a complete night shift, then obviously we want to get these kinds of things, the homeostatic sleep drive, the circadian um, alerting signal sleep drive, um, or wake drive more in line with those schedules. So in addition to those, it's also important to realize that um, we have different changes through the night uh, and through the day, really. Our core temperature changes, and this is not exact for every person, this is just kind of an example, but um, so our core temperature changes, melatonin levels change. So melatonin, it's a hormone, it's naturally produced in the body. It's not necessarily only one of those things where you get from, you know, over the counter and, um, you know, it's something that's naturally occurring. But it's important to realize that throughout the day, our circadian rhythms, temperature changes, hormone changes, um, all of this is, is kind of on a set schedule. So when we look at shift work disorder, Clearly, again, there's no surprise here. It's because often we're working and that's when, you know, it's impacting our ability to fall asleep when we normally would or when our body tells us we should. So it can be any of the above. Early morning shifts, night shifts, overnight shifts, you know, um, rotating shifts, all of the above. So some of the symptoms, um, some people are, are pretty aware that, hey, shift work disorder, I fall completely in line with this. Other of you may be kind of wondering, is this me? Is this not me? So ask yourself, do you have excessive sleepiness? Difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep. Lack of energy. Difficulty concentrating. Headaches. Poor mood, irritability, right? So a lot of these things are somewhat comorbid with other conditions. Um, and I will say that, for example, a night owl or someone who has a more so of a delayed um, sleep phase, you know, circadian rhythm kind of thing going on, they may be more attuned or it may be easier to work later shifts just because naturally they're more used to this. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk specifically about symptoms is that a lot of people, uh, sometimes when I, I see them, the initial consult and they're saying, yeah, I'm having difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep right? What is that signal? Okay, insomnia, right? But potentially that may not be the cause of insomnia, right? So clearly that's the biggest factor in, in insomnia, but it, you know, it could be due to the shift work more so than um, you know, primary insomnia. So just something to keep in mind.
it could always be different things that are impacting, um, you know, these symptoms. So it's also, you know, important because a lot of, um, a lot higher rates of work-related injuries occur when people have shift work um, timeframes, you know, general mistakes, increased use of sick time, accidents related to drivey, um, drivey, drowsy driving, I was combining two words. Um, and sometimes people will tell me, hey, you know, I will um, drink alcohol or utilize something else to be able to, um, you know, fall asleep. And a lot of times that has a lot uh, more cons than pros, so to speak. Being, being able to fall asleep, true, but could lower the sleep quality, could um, increase the amount of awakenings. So that's definitely something to um, chat more about with, with your provider or, you know, potentially in the future if, if you'd like to come work with me at, at Valley Sleep. So how long does shift work uh, disorder last? It depends. It definitely depends. Some people are able to uh, snap back. So they switch off of a, you know, a rotating shift or something. And after a week or two, they're completely fine. So kudos to them. Wonderful. For other people, um, it takes a lot longer, you know, because there's, there's a couple aspects to this. It's one, it's getting used to a different shift. And then again, it could be the other side where you're so used to it and then you get off of that shift. So instead of like, you're so used to working nights that once you get off of it, then you start having sleep difficulties. So it really does depend, but um, could be the stopping the schedule, could be the starting. So there are, um, couple different treatment options. And to be honest, none of these are 100% like, you know, most things in life in terms of ailments or, or um, you know, insomnia or other issues are not 100% success rates for any treatment. But in terms of shift work, it can be kind of tricky, you know? So there are some things that can help us shift um, towards a better schedule, or even if, if this is one of those things where um, the circadian rhythm is impacting how we're falling asleep, staying asleep, our, our level of fatigue, tiredness, alertness, all that kind of stuff. Light therapy can be helpful. Go into that in a second. Chronotherapy, somewhat of a um, time therapy. Melatonin use can be helpful, depending, as well as um, different medications can be helpful. So light therapy, we want to get uh, exposure to a lot of light when we are awake and we want to get a lower amount or a minimal amount when we are trying to lull ourselves to sleep or go to sleep. So to a certain degree, this can be hard enough for people that have a quote unquote normal schedule. You know, if you are one of those people that um, has a quote unquote normal schedule, you get up at seven, you go to sleep at 10, you know, we have tons of light exposure, whether it's TVs, movies, computers, phones, and bed, all that kind of stuff just in general. But especially for people that, you know, for example, you night shifters, you are awake when there is minimal light and then getting off of your shift going home. That's when light is starting to, um, you know, be out and about. So it's one of those things where naturally we have to fight against the light. <laughs> so during the night, we want to get a lot of light exposure. During the morning, we want to get minimal amount. Um, but in terms of an actual treatment approach, and this definitely varies depending on what's going on with you. But um, for example, for, for people with even normal schedules that are trying to alter their circadian rhythms, we want to start getting a lot of light early in the morning to signal to our body, we're awake, we're alert, we're alive, right? And then we want to decrease towards the end of the night. So that can even be, um, you know, from an artificial light, you know, with uh, what's called lux. So that's kind of a rating of brightness. And usually we want somewhere around 10,000 lux 
to be able to have enough oomph, so to speak, to trigger the alertness. Um, yeah, so the, the body, awake during light, sleep during dark. That's the biggest, biggest component to remember. Chronotherapy, real briefly, is based on changing when the body's sleep and wake schedule occurs, and we do this in a, a somewhat formatted version. So I kind of put an example uh, on here, and clearly, again, this, this would be different for everyone, depending on your schedule and your normal um, patterns and what your body is used to. But if you'll see, you know, in terms of if someone has an evening shift and normally they get off their shift and then they're awake for a long period, you know, well, two hours kind of thing, and they want to shift that a little bit earlier, they don't want to sleep in so late. Um, somewhat what we would want to do is start shifting this. So this is a very simple illustration, um, you know, instead of 3 to 11, 2.30 to 10.30, 2 o'clock to 10, 1.30 to 9.30. Um, the goal is to continue moving, you know, one way or another. The interesting thing about this is that with some people I've worked with, we actually need to shift throughout an entire day because it's so difficult to shift backwards. So in this example, we're shifting, we're shifting backwards. Um, it's so difficult for some people that it's actually easier to continue to stay awake later and later and later and sleep in later and later and later. And so if you think about it, eventually, um, you, you know, usually this example that I put on there is a little bit easier, but the other way, if you keep shifting later and later and later, you actually get to a point where you can sleep well during the desired period of time. So one, one aspect about this is that, yeah, it can definitely impact your ability to work during that week. I mean, clearly that's, you know, one of those things that um, you need to chat with your provider, myself, or someone else with. Um, but again, you know, sometimes we want to look at this short-term pain for long-term gain. Can this be something that can be adopted and switched over that therefore can then be helpful for potentially the rest of your life? So would it be worth it to, you know, be taking a week off of work or when you're already off or whatever? So um, medications, definitely um, there's different medications that can be beneficial. So um, clearly at Valley Sleep, we have a lot of different wonderful um, sleep medicine physicians. Um, so you can talk with them about different options. Um, so ultimately we want to increase alertness um, or increase sleepiness. That's kind of the name of the game with different medications. And then melatonin, Again, a natural hormone. Um, it's one of those things that can be somewhat helpful. Um, so again, want, want to chat with your provider for specifics, but um, even as much as, you know, or as low a dose as one milligram prior to bed, you know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes prior can be uh, potentially helpful. It really depends. Some people will mention this is very helpful. Other people, not as much just one thing to keep in mind. Um, so let's go through some tips. So if you are working uh, rotating shifts, this may seem like probably the most obvious one, but getting your team on board, letting them know what your goals are, seeing if it's possible to shift your schedule, maybe even just a little bit, right? So even if we're shifting it an hour earlier, that could make somewhat of a dramatic change. So taking a nap can also be one of those things that can be helpful right before your shift um, or, a, or a small nap in the middle of your shift. And this is particularly can be helpful for night shift. So, um, you know, especially, it's funny to hear myself say this because most often I'm working with people that are struggling with insomnia and the naps are like, you know, they're the exact opposite of what we're, we want to do. They're stealing sleep from some other point, uh, point in, the, in the night. But for you know, shift work disorders, this, is, this can definitely be one of those things where if you take a short nap right before work, and you don't want this to, you know, you don't want to wake up and then five minutes later go to work, but um, at least 30 minutes, if not 60 minutes prior to going in, so you kind of wake up a bit, 
it can be a little bit helpful. So if you think about this, when we sleep, adenosine level goes down to a certain degree. When we nap, adenosine level goes down. So sleep drive goes down. So we are not as tired and our, um, our alertness is a little bit um, increased going into work. So I do like to mention drowsy driving is unsafe driving. You know, in terms of all the research out there, you know, clearly this is, this is not a um, every night you, you know, <laughs> get out of a shift, it's um, you're in, in peril or danger, but technically your risks are higher. So it is very important to be uh, aware of drowsy driving. This keeping the same routine, if you hear nothing else than this one tip, ingrain this in your brain. Keep the same routine. I can't tell you how many people I've worked with that uh, know this very same thing where they shift or they, they just stay up for an extra day and then um, they can shift immediately and then once it comes back to the work week then it's, you know, they shift back and then it just doesn't work. If you can keep the same routine, it will be helpful for the most part, most often, I guess. Can't say that with 100% certainty, but 99% certainty, oftentimes it's helpful to keep the same routine weekdays, weekends, or whatever your on days are with your off days. Um, using a moderate amount of caffeine, and notice the keyword here is moderate amount. I'm not giving anyone the excuse to start um, drinking any of the new energy drinks that I can't pronounce and they have crazy stuff that no one's ever heard of as under the ingredients. Um, moderate amount of caffeine can help you stay alert, but you definitely do want to be aware that you want to start reducing or tapering the amount of caffeine through the shift. Because even though it may have an impact on our um, you know, our mind for a shorter amount of time, it does impact the body for a longer period of time. So, um, and I also can kind of hear in the back of my mind this, um, some people saying, well, I can drink caffeine and fall asleep after 30 minutes. Most often that's probably because of sleep deprivation. So again, you want to be in a place where um, if you're asleep, your body is in a good place and it's, it doesn't have a stimulant running through it. So it's better quality sleep. So this is something that I, I chatted about a little bit earlier, the avoiding exposure to sunlight when you are driving home. So again, I'm using the night shift example, but if you're getting off at six or seven in the morning and the sun is coming up, it may seem silly, but really be cautious of the amount of light exposure you're getting. When we're taking in light, it's telling our body, telling our mind, daytime, be awake, you know, kind of thing. And we want to have the exact opposite going on. We want to start feeling tired and drowsy. And so it kind of, it doesn't work so well. Um, eliminating noise, light from your sleep environment. This is somewhat simple, eye masks, earplugs, but you know, definitely can be beneficial. Um, sometimes I, I uh, work with people and they um, will say that their family members aren't as courteous potentially as um, <laughs> as they could be. So it is one of those important things um, that they know that when it's your bedtime, it's the same thing as if you were making a ton of noise when you know they're sleeping in the middle of the night, right? This needs to be a time when you can actually sleep and it's inter uninterrupted sleep. So whatever that means, because everyone has um, <laughs> often different family members who may do different things or ask question, questions of them and all. I've heard everything. So eating a healthy diet, same thing. It's important. I mean, as with any of uh, the sleep disorders, you want to plan ahead. You, want, you don't want high calorie fast food or vending machine options. I know that sometimes those are the only things that are open and available during, you know, morning times or random times. So, you know, meal planning, setting yourself up for success. It's actually a way that you can save some money too, other than just being healthier. Um, small tips, don't leave most tedious, boring tasks to the end of your shift. 
start it off when you're alert, when you're awake, when you're alive kind of thing. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. later in the shift, I think this is kind of common sense. We start to get more, more tired often. So if this is one of those things that um, is, is detrimental, difficult for you, whether it's uh, shift work disorder, whether it's something else going on, you know, please let me know um, how I can be of help. I always like to put these scheduling screens on here. It's, it's pretty darn easy in terms of scheduling an appointment with me. Um, it definitely is a good idea to be set up and get everything checked out from a medical standpoint if you haven't already with Valley Sleep to make sure something else isn't going on. So if, if you're already in the system, great, you could, you could schedule with me. This is what this other screen is about here. Um, you can schedule online. Um, if you are not um, a current patient, Valley Sleep, you can um, schedule online with one of our other providers just to make sure in terms of there's not something else from a, a physiological standpoint going on. So I will switch back over and then see if we have any questions or anything that... Um, Is it going to let you show your video? Tell me if it doesn't. Uh, nope, nope. Okay, yep. hold on. I don't know why it's doing that. I need to... Um, actually, I'll give you host, but then... Actually, no attendees. Um, I'm going to allow to talk in case anybody has a question. You don't have to talk, but if you guys want to ask a question, go right ahead. Thanks, everybody. Let's see. I need you to share your, I need to make you panelist and host. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I asked you to, okay. Okay, your host. Okay, wonderful, perfect. There you are. Yeah. So, does anybody have any any questions, any um, thoughts? Let me look at the chat here. If not, definitely no worries. But we always want to give just a, a little bit of time in case anybody has any thoughts or specific you, questions. You know, one thing that um, I don't, maybe you talked about this. I'm sorry, I had a phone call in the middle of it. Um, I know one thing that was a big problem for me because when I ran sleep studies, I had to work, you know, 12 hour shifts overnight. And it was a really, really difficult thing for me and to get through that 12 hours. And uh, I would drink coffee at like three o'clock in the morning to make it to seven because then I had to drive home. I worked at Banner uh, University downtown. Uh, back then it was called Banner Good Samaritan. And I had a 45 minute drive home. And so... It was so difficult to, you know, drive drowsy. I needed to drink coffee to be awake enough to drive home, but then I get home and I was like, I couldn't fall asleep. Right. So yeah. I, and then I learned, okay, no more coffee after a certain time because it stays in your system so long. Right. right. And so I would run the stairs. So at three o'clock in the morning, oh. I got tired, yeah. Stacy, the girl that I worked with, her and I would go into the like, uh, stairwell and we'd run up and down the stairs <laughs> because she had the same problem and yeah. you know we had little kids that we could only sleep till like three o'clock as soon as our kids got out of school we had to be awake until time for our next shift and those three days were so hard oh my gosh yeah. they were so hard yeah uh, but I wanted to point that out that if you are working night shift be really careful about how late into your shift you drink coffee because it stays in your system a long time. Right. I love how you just naturally figured out, all right, what is the one thing that it's impossible to do tired? Sprint up and down stairs. I mean, yeah. It works. So, you talk yeah. about a spike and the things that need to keep you awake. Cortisol. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Um, and let, let me tell you, I never wanted to do it, but every time I did it, I felt so much better. Right. I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of times, sometimes it's just being proactive enough to try out new things, see, all right, mm -hmm. uh, it's out of my comfort zone, like most things, it's figuring out, I got to try something else new that will give a new result. Um, yeah, so. Well, let me make sure there's no questions on um, Facebook, but if anybody has a question here, feel free to ask. You guys should be able to, if you can't raise your hand. <clears throat> No questions here. 
Jessica just chimed in on Facebook. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> She's off today. Look at that. Dedicated team member. Yes. Watching your... Our colleague. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she ever had to work night shift. Jessica, did you ever have to work night shift? <laughs> I think every healthcare worker has, has to work night shift. It's like your first job. You never get really anywhere in healthcare until you work night shift. Did you ever have to work night shift? I did not actually. Oh, no. never mind. Slings and arrows. That, I, sh that I should have got my PhD. <laughs> I'm not I mean, smart enough. I was working a very different night shift. It was just um, on my own accord during the during the doc program. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, I I I could have never got. I could barely. I never even got a bachelor's degree because I'm not smart enough. Maybe it, I just I don't think it's that I'm smart smart enough. I can't pay attention long enough. Because <laughs> I had a sleep disorder and didn't know it. Oh dear. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Rose. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Absolutely. Tomorrow we're talking about Inspire, an alternative to sleep uh, CPAP at noon and 5:30. So we'll see you guys then. All right. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.